Well, I'm a neurologist and I specialize in the treatment of epilepsy in babies, children, and adults. So I'm an epileptologist. One young girl who was at two and a half was having a seizure that would last at least an hour and come to the ER every month with that long seizure. And after seeing me, she went to three other large epilepsy programs and ultimately could not be treated until we finally sent her to a program that introduced a certain diet. A diet that was specialized for epilepsy, but simply with dietary modification and stopping her three or four anti-epilepsies she was on, those long seizures absolutely stopped. We might ask, well, if we have a young girl, two and a half, whose brain was changed in a very positive way by simply modifying diet, what does that mean for our children? I'm also a dad, and I have a little girl who's seven in second grade here in Charlottesville, and I had the opportunity to meet her for lunch. And I've gone to her school and sat in the cafeteria, and we, I got to see what's on her tray. And I, I am surprised to see that in the majority of cases, at least 80% of her caloric intake from that tray is, is simple carbohydrates, uh, not complex carbohydrates, and, and very little healthy fat and proteins. So from what I know from, my, from many of my patients, such as ADHD, where, where high sugar lows can actually exacerbate those symptoms that we treat in many cases with medications, I'm gonna ask myself, well, what's the consequence of this on my daughter? If every, every work day during the school year, She's having a diet that is not all that complex and, and is very rich in simple carbohydrates, the vast majority of which are rapidly absorbed. A diet that um, has higher protein content and fat content, the building blocks of the nerve cells of the brain, uh, might very well lead to better neurodevelopmental outcomes and, and better cognitive functions, that is performance in school and performance socially. For you to learn, you have to be attentive. You can't be fatigued, you can't be drowsy, and you can't be hypervigilant. Otherwise, attention won't be adequate and you won't be able to learn or encode information. And that's the basis of memory formation. So I might propose that if my daughter has a carbohydrate-rich rich lunch at 1130, that within two hours, that is at one o'clock in the afternoon, when those carbohydrates have been processed and she doesn't have any protein to carry through the rest of the afternoon, she's gonna be less attentive. And if she's less attentive, She's going to have, be less efficient at a coding information that her, try, her teacher is trying to provide her. And again, this is a child who's fortunately been blessed with being very healthy. So if you can imagine, if you add on top of that, a child that might have either a learning disability or a condition like ADHD, which is quite common in our population, it may actually be mar markedly worse. So I see the diet as just, being, as just as important as the social stimuli or the academic stimuli they receive in school and at home.